On today's episode, when will we see electric jets? Well, never. Here's why. Today's episode of End of the Line is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.tv today. Batteries are the hottest technology of the 2020s. They're powering cars, replacing fossil fuel power generating plants, and driving innovation in everything from submarines to delivery drones. Now they're also starting to appear in aircraft, notably light sport aircraft and some small experimental commuter planes. Now, many in the non-engineering media, however, are now speculating that the future is literally all electric, and in aviation that jet transports that we use for medium and long haul flights will eventually replace kerosene with batteries and electric motors. Well, that's not going to happen, and here's why. Aircraft that use propellers, and also those with very high bypass ratio turbofans as well, where they're constrained by a couple of immutable laws of physics. One is that a wing, and propellers and fan blades are essentially rotating wings, can't exceed the speed of sound without creating multiple problems, primarily a serious loss of efficiency. This is one of the reasons why piston engine aircraft can't fly supersonically, and in fact these compressibility effects limit propeller-driven aircraft powered by internal combustion engines to speeds of about 400 to 450 miles an hour for reasonably efficient crews. Now that's 1950 speeds, and we want to fly higher and faster. So jet engines did away with the propeller and used the reaction principle. This is the classic high school physics equation of M1V1 equals M2V2. A large mass of high-speed gases flowing out the back of a jet engine creates a reaction force that pushes the airframe forward. What makes it work is heat. The burning hydrocarbons in the engine combustors create a tremendous expansion of gases, resulting in not only high mass flow, but very energetic high-speed mass to create what we call thrust. And the great thing is the whirling compressor and turbine blades inside the jet engine don't have to spin so fast that they encounter those compressibility effects, so they can push an airplane to supersonic speeds. Spinning a fan with an electric motor for high subsonic flight on an airliner simply can't generate the combination of mass flow and velocity necessary to impart enough thrust for high-speed crews. Even turboprops, which use jet engines to spin propellers, and high bypass ratio turbofans with their huge front fans, derive a considerable amount of their thrust from that hot, high-speed exhaust. Now, could some of the battery power be used to heat that air? Well, no. Current lithium-ion battery technology can provide about 350 watt-hours of power per kilogram of battery weight. Jet fuel stores over 10,000 watt-hours per kilogram of weight. And as it's burned, the airplane gets lighter, while electric airplanes carry the weight of the batteries from takeoff to landing. In horsepower terms, each engine in a 777 generates over 100,000 horsepower. Replacing a 160 horsepower piston engine in a light aircraft is definitely practical, but in a large airliner, no. Is there another way? Possibly, perhaps with exotic technologies such as quantum nucleonic drive, but that's a story for another day. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.